Hey, brothers and sisters. Hello, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. I just want to bless you with the word that I believe it's for today. Uh, it's for every day. <laughs> it's for every day. And it's God's word for us. And I just want to share a couple of verses. I just want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. This is Paul speaking, writing to the church of Corinth. He says, Now, even though I am free from obligation to others, I joyfully make myself a servant to all in order to win as many converts as possible. I became Jewish to the Jewish people in order to win them to the Messiah. I became like one under the law to gain people who were stuck under the law. Even though I myself am not under the law, and to those who are without the, without the Jewish laws, I became like them as one without the Jewish laws in order to win them, although not outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ. <laughs> I became weak to the weak to win the weak. I have adapted to the culture of every place I've gone so that I could, be, I could, I could more easily win people to Christ. I've done all this so that I would become God's partner for the sake of the gospel. Amen. I just want to read another part here. And it's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23 to 33. It's a couple of verses. You say, under grace there are no rules. And we, and we, are, and, and we are free to do anything we please. Not exactly, because not everything promotes growth in others. Your slogan, we are allowed to do anything we choose, may be true, but not everything causes the spiritual advancements of others. So don't always seek what is best for you at the expense of another. Yes, you are free to eat anything without worrying about your conscience. For the earth and all its abundance belongs to the Lord. So if I'm an unbeliever, so if an unbeliever invites you to, to dinner, go ahead and eat whatever is served without asking questions concerning where it came from. But if he goes out of his way to inform you that the meat was actually an offering, sacrificed to idols, then you should, you should pass, not only for his sake, but because of his conscience. I'm talking about someone else's conscience, not yours. What good is there in doing what you please if it's condemned by someone else? So if I voluntarily participate, why should I be judged for celebrating my freedom? Whether you eat or drink, live your life in a way that glorifies and honors God. And make sure you are not offending Jews or Greeks or any part of God's assembly over your personal preferences. Follow my example, for I try to please everyone in all things, rather than putting my liberty first. I, I sincerely attempt to do anything I can, I can, do, I can so that others may be saved. So, I'm just going to pass, wait for the helicopter. There we go, there we go. So, the main scripture, the main reason I'm reading this is when we respond to each other, when we respond to each other, we're responding to Christ in us. We are new creations. The old, old has passed away. The new has come. So we are lovers and we imitate Christ. We imitate Christ. When Christ was with the Samaritan woman, a well, woman who said, you're not allowed to. Why are you drinking from the same well as the Samaritans? He wasn't offended. What he did is he told uh, the woman about the kingdom in Christ. So in this time, let us not take offense, man. Let us love people. Let us be who God wants us to be. Let us show God to people. Let us not offend in anything we do, whether it's a Facebook post, whether it's a, whether it's a, it's, 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 it's in eating, whether it's in drinking. Let's not offend people. The Bible says, "In this world you will have tribulation. In this world you will have tribulation." That's what Jesus says. But He says, "Be of good cheer." For I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. We are in him. So we are of good cheer. Regardless of any circumstance. Regardless of what's happening. And if I say something to you. 
If I do something that is not for your benefit, that is not Christ. If I do something that is doesn't help you grow, that is not Christ. That's who we are. We help people grow. We reveal Christ to people. We do not we do not do things for our own selfish gains. Paul here is talking about the eating of, of, of idols food. Uh, and he's talking about when he was with the Jews, he became a Jew. When he was with the Gentiles, he became a Gentile. And I think <laughs> I would like to think that that's how Jesus was. Wherever Jesus was, he adapted to the way the people were. And, 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 and he loved people regardless of where they were. So I just want to encourage you that we as believers were supposed to strengthen and encourage each other. And we must have, Paul speaks about for the weak he became weak. We must have compassion even for those that are weak and that do not have the same knowledge as us. Listen. Our, we are saved, man. God is not holding anything against us. We don't have to do it. We get to do it. We get to be lovers. We get to be encouragers. We get to be emboldened. To, to, to be emboldened us. We get to embold people, to encourage people. That's who we are. So I just want to leave you with that word. Please go read that, that scripture for yourself. And also, next time you're with a brother and sisters, we're with a brother or sister, you must always be conscious. I must be conscious. And I pray to the Lord that I am conscious of what I say to you, or, 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 or what I do, what, what I eat before you. An example, there was a brother who was helping us with the electrical work here at home. He believed in the Sabbath. He was a, a Seventh-day Adventist. He was born again, tongue-talking Christian. He prayed in tongues, but he was a Seventh-day Adventist. And I felt like every time to discount that, but God would say, no, preach Jesus, preach the gospel. And we are brothers today. Whether he goes to church to Sunday and he believes that Seventh Day <laughs> is, is praising God. It doesn't matter. Me telling him that he's wrong, it doesn't encourage him, it doesn't embolden him. At his own time, God will reveal uh, his plan for him. And so it is the same with a Baptist. I've got friends that are Baptists that are also, we preach, when we read together, we read the Bible. Yes, we disagree on a lot of things, but one thing makes us one is Christ. So I pray that we focus on our unity in Christ Jesus and not on our, what separates us and divides us. And I pray that if I offend you in any way or hurt you, that you will be able to receive from me just as I may be able to receive from you. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm not hearing what you're saying. And I go with my own opinion. I pray that the Lord will open up my heart and my ears for you. And always... I do not seek my own way, but your way. So I pray that this blesses you today. I encourage you to read that word. It's in the book of 1 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I would read the whole verse. Let us not seek our own way. Let us not try to be right, man. We are right with Christ. We are righteous. Why are we trying to be right? You are already righteous. You are already holy. You are already pure. Yes, the world is a messed up place, but we are in Christ. God bless you, brothers and sisters.